Hi all, uh, thanks for joining Meetup or thanks for joining this video online. Today we have um, um, a special session about uh, Jenkins in uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, we will have uh, an introduction uh, to what uh, Google Summer of Code is, so what the uh, Jenkins project um, is doing there, and uh, then we will have presentations uh, uh, by potential mentors. So potential mentors will uh, present uh, their projects and their project ideas uh, which you can use uh, uh, for submissions. Um, the target audience for these meetups uh, are uh, potential students, so ones who would be interested to participate um, in a, a Google Summer of Code. And we target this audience if you're interested in mentoring. Uh, we have office hours and we can follow up um, after the meetup. Um, but uh, let's uh, reserve all time uh, for the discussion with students today. Oh. Am I still online? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah because I tried changing slide and I just see loading screen. Okay, this yeah. is, uh, the, we're so, seeing the same thing. It says loading on our on our view as well. Okay. Yeah, if you participate in Google Summer of Code, get uh, ready to a lot of surprises while doing remote uh, collaboration and uh, such events. Okay, let's do this without presentation mode then. Um, if you join uh, Jenkins Online Meetup first time, uh, it's a community-driven virtual event. So we do presentations uh, and discussions about any topic related to Jenkins, whether it's uh, Jenkins uh, usage, Jenkins administration, or Jenkins development. And uh, these meetups are quite relaxed, so everybody is welcome to join, to participate, um, and uh, we encourage you to ask questions uh, or to comment uh, uh, during the discussion. And uh, we are constantly looking for um, speakers. So there is advocacy and outreach special interest group. And if you're interested to present something in the Jenkins online meetup, just let us know um, and we will uh, help to get it organized. Okay, uh, if you have any questions uh, during this meetup, please uh, use uh, Zoom chat or um, uh, Jenkins JSON Gitter channel. It's our main uh, Gitter channel we use for all kinds of communications uh, during uh, Google Summer of Code. So um, feel free to join and uh, ask there. And uh, yeah, after the meetup, you can also use mailing keys. Um, uh, we will share links later. And just in case you participate, uh, please keep in mind that uh, we have a code of conduct, but uh, uh, too long didn't read, uh, just be kind. That's uh, our approach. Okay, now let's, nah, it looks horrible. Oh, now it works. Okay, um, today we talk about uh, Google Summer of Code. Um, okay, I'll dump it to PDF next time. Uh, so uh, today we uh, talk about Google Summer of Code and um, uh, I believe that almost everybody on the call is familiar with this program, though we will have a quick introduction. Today's meetup is hosted by Jenkins Org Admin Team. So you can see the names, but you cannot see photos. Um, okay, interesting times. So, well, yeah, we have a like uh, If you'd like me to prevent, I can also present. Uh, well, I think it's uh, related uh, to Google Slides. And I'm not sure what happens, uh, but yeah, uh, I do not think I have too much content um, uh, which requires pictures. Let me just reload it. Okay, here we go. Um, so yeah, uh, this meetup is hosted uh, by Orc Admins. This year we have four Admins, Marky, uh, and, uh, Martin, uh, Kara, who manages uh, Jenkins X project, and me. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, our work admin team uh, will, will be happy uh, to help you. Today's agenda, as we discussed, is just a quick introduction and project presentations. Maybe presentation button works, please. Okay. Um, so if you have never heard about Google Summer of Code, uh, it's uh, the uh, biggest uh, open source mentorship uh, outreach program. Uh, it uh, operates across uh, the world uh, to uh, 2020 is 16 years 
assistance here for GSOC and there are thousands of students and uh, open source organizations who partic uh, which participate um, and the idea that uh, students um, um, just uh, get an uh, internship uh, in open source organizations and these organizations provide mentors, provide uh, project ideas and resources. So students uh, work with open source organizations, uh, study how community works, uh, deliver some uh, useful features and it's a win-win for everybody. Um, in uh, Jenkins, uh, we started participating in 2016. Uh, it's our first year, uh, sorry, fourth year in JSOC. Um, uh, we, this year we had uh, for around uh, 20 project ideas and this year we have Jenkins uh, um, and Jenkins X participating in the umbrella of uh, the same organization. If you're interested to know more about uh, Jenkins and JSOC, everything is available on um, our website. So it's uh, Jenkins IO project. Uh, GSOC. If you go there, you can find a lot of uh, resources, um, a lot of information and links to all materials. So basically, uh, what we present today, you can find everything on uh, our website. And uh, what are our goals for GSOC? Uh, we participated uh, uh, for a long time and uh, we have found uh, GSOC really helpful. Firstly, uh, for building bridges in the community, for onboarding new people um, and finding contributors. And our main goal is to provide uh, the best possible GSOC experience uh, for students and for mentors. We do not target a quantity of projects. We usually have uh, uh, just less than five of them. Last year we had seven. Uh, this year maybe we'll have five again. Um, but uh, we work closely as a community. We organize uh, regular uh, office hours, we stay in touch uh, with uh, students, with mentors, and we try to organize a lot of uh, events uh, during uh, the GSOC period. If you take a look at our previous years, you can uh, find uh, links to dozens of meetups, blog posts, and other activities uh, we try to find. Uh, what project types we usually have? So it's either key initiatives uh, which target uh, um, uh, main Jenkins goals. So for example, Jenkins evolves uh, towards configuration as code. We're interested to improve our infrastructure. We are interested to improve our documentation, etc. And we are interested to have uh, Google Summer of Code projects uh, which would be contributing towards these goals. Also, we want to invest into domain specific areas. Jenkins is an open source automation server and it means that we can use it almost everywhere. Uh, for example, me and Martin, we came from um, electronic design area and we're interested in electronic design automation projects. Um, we also have a project idea related to machine learning. We have project ideas uh, related to specific technologies like uh, um, Git uh, or GitHub integrations uh, and uh, so on. And we also have some uh, cross-organization projects. So this year Jenkins X participates under the Jenkins umbrella. Uh, we also had uh, effective collaboration with free and open source Silicon Foundation. This year we have a project idea from OpenVRT uh, organization, which is also related to Jenkins X. And uh, this is also a kind of projects we want to do. Um, and uh, if you're a student, if you have something in mind, you're welcome to make a proposal. So we are not limited to the project ideas we have right now. We are uh, uh, happy to consider other project ideas. So just make it your proposal. Um, if you're in, if you have experience with Jenkins or you have experience with other automation tools, it would be a great opportunity. Okay, uh, before we proceed, any comments from other work admins? The only thing I will add is just thank you mm -hmm. all for being here. It is very awesome to see such a large crowd. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, so as I said, we have um, a number of project ideas listed here. Uh, we will uh, cover some of these project ideas uh, during the presentation and we will also talk a bit about how to apply because we have uh, some additions to application guidelines, uh, which are uh, designed to help students to establish uh, contacts with our organizations and to be more efficient when uh, they work on the proposals. 
Okay, since I spent some time uh, on uh, our GSO goals, you can uh, take a look at the previous years. If you go to our website, you can find uh, that uh, there are archives. So just in the bottom, there are links for to GSO 2019, 2018, and uh, so forth. Uh, and um, just uh, take a look, uh, of, uh, there are links to projects, there are links to materials related to this year, so you can find uh, a lot of information. And uh, there are some highlights um, for projects we are, uh, for example, last year we created the end use uh, um, integration for GitLab ICM, uh, we provide multi-branch pipelines, we had a lot of improvements um, uh, related to web UI, tooling, um, um, and also there were projects which got continuation this year. For example, plugin manager CLI tool, it was implemented last year. And this year you have a project idea uh, which adds additional features for that. And uh, yeah, as I, we said, JSOC is mostly an online event, but we have some offline events. To be honest, I'm not sure about this year, but uh, we keep our fingers crossed. And uh, we had uh, students visiting uh, Jenkins World um, in the United States and Lisbon. We had mentors who traveled uh, to JSOC Mentor Summit. And uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity for everyone uh, to participate and uh, to become a part of the Jenkins community. Um, if you're interested about uh, specific channels for JSOC, we have a mailing list. So our main recommendation for the project is to operate through mailing lists. Uh, if you go there, you can find a lot of uh, different threads uh, related to various topics. And if you're interested, uh, we recommend subscribing to this mailing list. Uh, also, we have Gitter channel, which I presented. We have regular office hours. Today, we have an online meetup, but uh, during the same time frame, every week we have uh, uh, open office hours, so everyone can join, can uh, uh, ask questions. Um, and we also have project specific channels. So if you go to project ideas, you may discover that uh, some projects are actually driven uh, not uh, by a JSOC team, but uh, uh, by special interest groups uh, in Jenkins. Uh, for example, if you go to, uh, let's take a look, for example, custom uh, Jenkins distribution service, here you can see that the mailing list and chat, they point to another location because it's handled by the platform special interest group, which works on different integrations. And uh, you are welcome to join these resources. You will find uh, a community which is interested particularly in this project and they can uh, become your stakeholder uh, during the, uh, the implementation. Uh, same for Jenkins X. Uh, we have uh, three projects related uh, to Jenkins X this year. Well, now four. So um, there are two projects related to uh, Jenkins X core functionality. Um, and uh, here you can see that uh, uh, there is a link uh, going to custom Jenkins X channels because Jenkins X is a separate project uh, now, uh, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of communication and cross pollination and you can find uh, that um, uh, the channels there. So you can just join them and um, have a discussion with uh, the Jenkins X community. We have Kara and Marky on the call um, and they are active contributors uh, to Jenkins X. So they will be also able to answer questions if needed. Okay. And uh, one item which uh, was mentioned this year. Uh, this year we have not only Jenkins participating in the Google Summer of Code, but we also have Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, Jenkins joined Continuous Delivery Foundation last year, same for Jenkins X. Uh, but this year we decided that we keep uh, operating as a, a separate uh, uh, JSOC organization, mostly because of the timing, because CD Foundation uh, joined uh, JSOC late. Uh, we already had our documentation in place and uh, students working with us. Uh, so this year there will be two organizations. And if you're interested to, in applying to Jenkins or Jenkins X, please apply to the Jenkins organization. And for all other um, uh, projects like uh, Tipton, Screwdriver, uh, please use a CD Foundation organization. Um, we have uh, organizations in both organizations, so we will be able to help if something goes wrong. But yeah, general recommendation is to apply to Jenkins. If you want to uh, find more information about uh, Jenkins, we already presented a website. Um, we also keep track of uh, recordings for previous meetings uh, because we have office hours. We also had some uh, project specific meetings and you can find uh, all the recordings um, on the uh, YouTube channel. 
so we'll share a link to the presentation and you can find a lot of information here. Uh, it may be addition for your applications and for your research regarding Jenkins community and specific projects. So just uh, use it as a source of information. And we also have blog where we sometimes post uh, something about uh, JSOC. So here, if you open uh, this hyperlink, uh, there is a, a JSOC tag um, on the, um, the Jenkins website, and you can find a lot of materials related uh, to Google Summer of Code and Jenkins, including success stories, including uh, case studies, uh, blog posts by our students, which can provide you information how we approach the projects and how we uh, collaborate with students uh, during evaluations and during and uh, after JSOC as well. So. This is uh, the basic information I wanted to provide about Jenkins organization. Sorry if it was a bit chaotic and uh, everybody is uh, welcome to comment and provide more details. Uh, if you want to apply, I forgot to put a link here, but we have, a, uh, let's just imagine that we visit our landing page and here you can find information uh, for students. Um, here, first link here is information and application guidelines for students. Um, this guide um, extends uh, uh, Google Summer of Code student guide and provides some additional information uh, which might be helpful uh, during the application. So you can find a lot of information uh, here. Uh, yeah, you can find uh, 10 steps, but uh, don't be afraid. Uh, steps are actually really easy. Um, and uh, uh, you can just use them as a reference. What we really expect you to is uh, to explore our project ideas we have. Uh, so we have quite a number of project ideas here. If you're interested in particular area or in particular technology, uh, just uh, um, um, uh, research the topics, uh, join uh, the channels associated with uh, these project ideas. For example, here there is a mailing list which relates to Platform Seek and Gitter channel uh, points to JSOC. I'm not sure why I will change it, I will check it. Uh, but uh, these channels you should join and you're welcome to ask about this project and to ask for more details uh, um, in the channels. And if needed, our mentors will be able to organize additional meetings and the discussions in the background um, if time allows. So you can find these materials uh, helpful. Also, um, we ask you when you make a proposal. So uh, JSOC team has an excellent uh, guide about how to write proposals and what uh, should be there. So if you go to the JSOC website, you can find uh, writing a proposal section here and uh, this covers the most of information. We have some additional uh, tips uh, for Jenkins students, uh, but it's mostly based on the JSOC guide. Uh, in addition, uh, we would like to have some insights about contribution history to open source projects if it exists. And also we would like to know about your availability during the GSOC timeframe because uh, we want uh, uh, to make uh, it a good experience for everyone. So if there are uh, exams scheduled or if you have some tra travel plans, uh, we would like to adjust. We would like to ensure that uh, mentors uh, um, are available. And if you're over committed, um, we can also discuss it with you during the application timeframe. Uh, we don't block students who have some commitments from participating in GSOC, not at all. Uh, but uh, we still uh, want to ensure that uh, students really have capacity to work on our projects. And if you apply, if you have full-time internship and uh, university study in parallel, um, for us, uh, your career and your study is the first priority. And uh, please um, keep it in mind when you apply to JSOC because JSOC is a huge commitment and we want you to be successful. Uh, so sometimes it's better to not apply to JSOC and to postpone it to the next year if you already have too many commitments. Okay. And additional thing, uh, we have a project proposal template. Again, it's template, it's not binded. You are welcome to use your own project application template but you can use it. And the main uh, purpose for this template is to actually um, discuss uh, project ideas with the community early, because uh, if you just uh, submit uh, 
your proposal to Google Summer of Code without uh, getting feedback from potential mentors and from Jenkins community. Uh, most likely there will be some gaps and our recommendation is to actually submit your proposals for uh, initial review before you apply. That's why we provide the links to uh, mailing fees and uh, to other channels because you can uh, really work with uh, our mentors and to uh, verify your ideas, uh, to get feedback uh, so that uh, your proposal becomes better. And we are happy to help with that. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Any questions or comments from Orc Admins before we proceed? Nothing from me. So any far, questions? so good, Oleg. Okay, thank you. Any questions in the chat? I don't see any. Um, um, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. So is there a number of students that um, Jenkins can take for Google Summer Code? Is there a limit? Mm, it's uh, it will be discussed a bit uh, later. Uh, if you open uh, JSTOC, you can uh, see that uh, there are multiple phases, um, and uh, there will be uh, um, a phase where organizations um, uh, do, uh, do project planning, discuss slots, and request these slots. So right now, we, uh, nobody requested that. Uh, and uh, we will be doing it later after processing call student applications. Um, any Google Summer of Code organization is guaranteed to get one slot. Oh. Is my video turned off? Okay, sorry. Uh, but um, yeah, if uh, usually we request uh, uh, slots for all projects we consider feasible and uh, if you believe that the project can be successful, if you're able to find a mentor team, we request a slot for them. And historically, we used to get uh, as many slots as we requested. So, but right now, there is no guarantee for that. It uh, depends on uh, many factors, and uh, basically, it's Google uh, uh, which makes uh, this decision, not us. Okay. Anything else? I would like to add uh, a little bit of information to to what you said, Oleg, if if I may. Yeah, sure. So regarding the number of students we accept, it for us it's based on our capacity to mentor the students. Historically, mm -hmm. we have accepted anywhere between three to um, seven seven yeah. students and it changes on it changes every year based on our capacity to mentor and the other thing is that sometimes we make a request to Google say we want to request we request nine and they only give us let's say six or seven so some of it is within our control in terms of our capacity to mentor. And some of it is not within our control because Google may not give us the number of slots that we ask for. They may give us less. That's what I wanted to add. Thank you, Martin. And just to add, uh, we actually have a lot of potential mentors. So keyword here is potential because we will be working with mentors during the project selection phase to make final decisions and to map teams. And if needed, we will be reaching out to other community members to find more mentors. Uh, so right now, our mentoring capacity is quite high. Uh, obviously, it will uh, depend on uh, applications, um, uh, but I believe that we can uh, run uh, uh, many projects in parallel this year. So it mostly depends uh, on what we get in applications and we encourage all students who are interested to apply earlier so that we can do initial planning and uh, uh, invite mentors early even uh, before the student application phase ends okay anything else before we proceed
Okay. If not, uh, yeah, we already discussed our project ideas. Um, one thing which uh, makes sense to mention because um, we got some students who were confused. Uh, in this uh, table, we have three kinds of projects. One is accepted. Accepted means that it's a fully qualified project idea. Uh, what it means that it uh, matches uh, standards of the Jenkins community because we expect all project ideas published to have quick start guidelines so that students can uh, explore very quickly. And we also want them to have newbie friendly issues link so that uh, students could pick up something. Uh, right now, we don't have so many newbie friendly issues left across the projects. We are trying to fix uh, that, uh, but still we expect that. Uh, there are also draft project ideas, uh, and draft project ideas are also fun to apply to. So if you're interested in any project idea in this list, uh, please feel free to apply. Um, they're ready, we have mentors behind them. Um, but the scope may change during the discussions. And for the record, it doesn't mean uh, discussions during the student application. It also means discussions during community bonding and maybe even uh, during the first coding phase. So what it means is that these uh, projects um, have uh, basically wide open um, expectations. And as a student, you're uh, welcome to come up uh, with a proposal which would uh, narrow it down and uh, to something which you would like to implement. It also applies to these project ideas. These project ideas are really ideas. We don't have strict guidelines and in many cases we deliberately leave a lot of options for students to choose. So for example, if you open, uh, let's say, external fingerprint storage project idea, it's in Google Doc. Here you can um, see that uh, there are some items which we expect to be included and some items which could be included if a student is interested. So you as a student have full freedom to explore the areas, uh, propose something uh, from uh, additional list uh, or even something which is not proposed uh, um, in this project idea at all. It, uh, it's really up to you um, as a student because uh, you submit the, the final application and the final proposal. And we also have discussion category, it's just in the bottom, but uh, this project ideas may or may not happen uh, depending on uh, available mentors uh, and on the discussion outcomes. So right now we don't have a strong guarantee that we will have mentors. And if you're interested in one of these projects, just let us know, we will uh, try to help. But yeah, my recommendation in the current state, because we have only two weeks left, uh, focus on uh, draft and accepted project ideas because um, they provide a lot of information and we are really ready to integrate in them. I have one question uh, as a student. Uh, so uh, what the time lapse when I should start to work on, on any project? And I, as I understand is as soon as possible. Um, uh, let's define what work means. Uh, so Google Summer of Code is about code. And here you can see that coding officially begins on uh, May 18th. So it means that by this time, we don't expect you to produce any production ready code or any code which uh, would uh, uh, go um, into your final uh, uh, release. But at the same time, uh, right now, your goal is to work on the proposals. So for example, here, the yeah, deadline for applications is much 31st, and the applications have already opened. Some students have reached out to, to us uh, three or four months ago, uh, but uh, the idea here is to work on your application. So uh, to create a project proposal, which would be um, evaluated by mentors, uh, which would, uh, include explicit list of deliverables, uh, project plan, uh, which we would consider as feasible. And uh, this is your main priority right now. If coding helps uh, to achieve that, you're welcome to do so. If doing some contributions and exploring community helps, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, but uh, um, right now, the main objective is proposal. We don't expect any uh, production uh, code to be delivered uh, by mid-May. Okay, and uh, the second question, uh, 
should I become upset if I see that someone started to do that project and start making contributions to that idea that I want to participate um, in? So Jenkins is about open source community. It may happen that uh, some activities happen in parallel. Uh, you can be upset, uh, of course, but uh, there are other ways. For example, you can reach out to this student. Uh, uh, you could uh, find ways to submit uh, projects which would be in the same area, but which uh, don't conflict with each other. Uh, we had such cases and it's uh, totally possible because again, uh, these are project ideas. Um, and uh, you can also submit your own proposal because uh, it's not something like uh, we accept uh, the first uh, project uh, and uh, the most uh, the student who reached out to us earlier. Um, we uh, make our decision based on the proposal quality and uh, um, on uh, the chances of the project to succeed, which uh, consists of multiple factors. Uh, not just on the time uh, when uh, a student contacted the community. So um, having other students exploring project ideas is not a blocker. Okay, good. Got it. Thanks. Okay. So we have 25 minutes left. I suggest we proceed with um, uh, project presentations. And if you have some time after that, we can uh, answer more questions. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them in a sync mode so that uh, uh, we answer them uh, while uh, mentors uh, do the presentations. Okay, uh, Mark, uh, you are first in the list. Uh, would you like to share your screen or would you like to, uh, me to do the screen Just, share? Your screen is great, Oleg. If you're willing to go to the next okay. slide, that's perfect. So the, uh, Git, sure. plugin the Git plugin project ideas are related to first, performance improvement based on benchmarks, and second, repository caching on agents. Uh, the concept with the performance improvement based on benchmarks is that we think there are benefits to be gained by applying a systematic benchmarking process to the Git plugin. It has two implementations inside of it, one for JGit and one for command line Git. And we think there will be times when one one implementation is faster than the other and should be recommended. And we could benefit users. Last year's GSOC provided the Java micro benchmark harness. And we think we'd like that this project idea would take the Java micro benchmark harness and use it to apply it to the Git plugin. First idea. Second was that repository caching on agents is to take the concept that Agents can benefit significantly if we could put a copy of the Git repository local to that agent that multiple workspaces could use as a cache. Uh, the concept already exists on the master, but is not widely used. So this would be a benefit there. Um, Oleg, I think given our short time, I'd like to leave that as my total. Is that okay? Or is there more that I should say? That's perfectly fine. Um, for all projects, we organize special sessions. So if you're interested to know more, uh, there is a Gitter channel for specifically for Git plugin project idea. You can uh, ask questions there and just uh, to uh, explain uh, why this is important. If you go to plugins, Jenkins.io, it's our plugin site. You can see a number of installations for the Git plugin. It's, uh, uh, 250,000, uh, well, basically 80% or 90% of instances which submit statistics. So for us, Git is really critical and um, it's also critical for Jenkins users because here you actually address uh, millions of Jenkins users and it applies to many other projects. Uh, so um, Jenkins is widely used and uh, there is a lot of opportunities to contribute to such large scale projects. Thanks. Good explanation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's move on. Jenkins X. Kara, are you online? Hi. Just need to unmute. Um, so Jenkins X. First of all, we'll just say that Jenkins X is not Jenkins. And I say this because this is my most common question that I get asked. Um, it was, however, started as a Jenkins sub project but it has a completely new code base written in Go from scratch, from the ground up. There is zero code from the Jenkins project in Jenkins X, and it's an entirely different architecture. And in fact, it solves different problems in different ways. 
So we can go to the next slide. <laughs> so it's, it's a cloud native CI CD platform for Kubernetes. So its use case is much more narrow than for Jenkins. And uh, to go back with it being originally a Jenkins subproject, Jenkins X used static Jenkins masters to power its pipelines initially, but that's no longer the case. Now Tekton, which is an open source project within the CDF, the Continuous Delivery Foundation, that is now the pipeline engine for Jenkins X. And Jenkins X, to reiterate, was designed from the ground up to be a Kubernetes native um, platform for CI CD, and it enables developers to take advantage of the full power of Kubernetes. Um, what this means in practice is that it has a it, it's a different developer experience. So it is extensible in the same way that Jenkins is, but it is much more opinionated. And it really um, it gives you an opinionated workflow based on GitOps. So it has certain best practices, which are very uh, good for developers to follow, um, such as your single source of truth for all your code, including for your infrastructure, everything is in Git, and environment changes are made via pull request, which trigger your pipelines to execute changes. And that enables you to test and collaborate on changes um, more transparent Apparently, because one of the ways in which Jenkins X leverages Kubernetes is that it, it develops um, identical environments for your development, your production, and your uh, staging environments. And these enable you to promote through these st stages with parity and making rollback simple. And at the very end of your staging environment, when all your CI CD tests pass, we will spin up by default a preview environment, and that enables you to see like a live, a live version of your changes. And this enables more transparent feedback among your team. I mean, for yourself as well, but really enables faster feedback from your team, faster code reviews, and enables you as a team to have shorter lived branches, which again is a very nice best practice. Um, and, and then once you, you manually promote, um, the, our default is that you manually promote to production, but you can also do that automated if you wish to. Um, and the automation aspect of that is that it enables you to start doing progressive delivery. You can do canary deployments, you can do A-B testing, these sort of things um, are, are much facilitated with Jenkins X. Uh, yep, so you can roll back and recover from your changes easily if you need to because of the way in which all changes are in git and they're audited you can roll back those changes if you need to which is a nice fast recovery too yeah. okay. uh, that tells you a little bit about jenkins x if you have any does anyone have any questions on jenkins x and then i'll speak briefly about the project proposals maybe it's better to take uh, detailed discussion offline just because okay. we have part agenda but if okay. somebody asks in chat Kara uh, will be able to answer in parallel with other uh, discussions okay that sounds very good um so we have two uh proposals which have have gone beyond the draft stage um and that is they both relate to the way in which Jenkins X handles uh, extensibility so we have currently both apps and add-ons um this is a little bit confusing in its nomenclature, so we would like to consolidate that, but it's also confusing in how the CLI handles them. So it's a little bit of a UI design challenge, although we know the direction in which we would like it to go, but it's also uh, very much a coding project in that we would like the commands themselves to be consolidated. And, um, and both these extensibility frameworks um, enable Jenkins X to use all sorts of like best in breed open source tools that are Kubernetes native themselves. So like Istio or Knative or Nginx, things like that, it just, or Flagger or things like that. It enables extensibility with Nginx. So it's, it's a really nice project to work on. The second one also has to do with uh, Jenkins X extensibility. Um, in that now we want to consolidate on using apps as our nomenclature, but we would also like those apps to be able to use in any, to be able to be uh, booted basically in any namespace. So currently I believe the way in which the apps work, they only work in one namespace. But the idea is we would like them to be more flexible and we would like them to be able to work with our new um, 
the way in which the Jenkins X pipelines are booted themselves is JX boot. This is a new way of doing it. So it's a pipeline to boot the pipeline. And what we would like is for the apps themselves to integrate well with that initial boot process. So this is, um, uh, yeah, as, as Oleg is scrolling through, this tells you a little bit more about that project. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, um, please do ask them on our Jenkins X Slack channels. So I put a link in the slides that you all have, which, and I, it's also on these, these project pages, but that tells you how to join our Slack. So we're part of the Kubernetes Slack, but the Jenkins X dev and the Jenkins X user, you can jump on there and ask any questions you have. They're very active Slack channels and people are quick to answer. Thank you. Okay, what's next in our list? Mm. Oh, actually, it's me. Okay, I'll uh, just uh, do one two minute speech. So, uh, Mark has talked about uh, Java related projects, and the most of the Jenkins ecosystem is built around Java, Groovy, and the basic Java virtual machine. For web UI, we actually adopt JavaScript. Uh, but if you want to try other technologies, we also have opportunities. For example, Windows Services, um, it's a project which is uh, based on a .NET ecosystem. So here, if you go to skills, basically it's a, we have a project which is written on C Sharp, which is powered by .NET. And right now we use both uh, recent uh, .NET framework versions and .NET Core. And obviously it uh, targets Windows. So if you're interested in Windows ecosystem, it might be an interesting project for you. Uh, why it's important, um, we still have um, a big number of users uh, running uh, continuous integration with Windows. And it's important for ones who want to deliver software or hardware or whatever, which would include uh, Windows components um, or which require specific development tools um, available on Windows. And um, uh, Windows Service Wrapper is used uh, for running uh, Jenkins agents as services or run um, you know, Jenkins master itself as a service. It's a standalone project. It started as a part of Jenkins. Now it, um, it, it's hosted on a separate organization. We are planning to move it to .NET Foundation uh, sooner or later. Uh, there are some uh, groundwork for that. Um, it's quite popular, not only uh, for Jenkins actually. Uh, it's been used in uh, numerous uh, projects outside and you can uh, see that uh, there's uh, 900,000 downloads uh, since uh, GitHub releases was introduced uh, three years ago. So it uh, gets adopted quite well. Um, it has some historical issues because um, it was created uh, long ago and uh, current configuration format is complicated because it uses XML. Uh, well, uh, YAML is quite popular now, especially if you talk about Kubernetes ecosystem like the Jenkins X, YAML is everywhere. And we would be interested to also have support of YAML and uh, maybe support of better verification of configurations. So this is what uh, the project is about. Uh, uh, but uh, basically you can uh, come up with other proposals. Uh, you can see that there are 150 issues. Some of them are related to specific technologies, for example, for .NET Core. So if you want to study something, um, it's also an opportunity. So you can check out this project, try it out and uh, uh, submit your application and then you can integrate it into Jenkins because um, we use uh, components which use uh, this Windows service wrapper. So any feature which is delivered there will help uh, Jenkins users a lot. Uh, so that's why we host uh, this project under the Jenkins umbrella and uh, you're welcome to participate in that. Uh, just uh, let us know. Okay, uh, Ule? Can you just open the slides, please? Oh, okay. The next uh, 24. Okay, this one. Yeah, okay. Uh, my project is about uh, the GitHub uh, checks integration uh, in Jenkins. So uh, in order to understand what you're required to do here is uh, currently all pull requests for Jenkins plugins and for Jenkins core are automatically built within Jenkins. And the current uh, state is that Jenkins reports the success of the builds in each pull request with a simple uh, status line, as you see here in the image. 
So current, for instance, this is a pull request of one of my plugins and you see uh, GitHub actions, uh, it, everything is working fine. And in Jenkins, some problem has been occurred. And now in order to see what actually is the problem, you need to open Jenkins and navigate to the details. For instance, look if a test has been failed or if a warning has occurred. And that's a little bit cumbersome. So the idea would be, we don't want to see the results in Jenkins. Yes, thanks. Uh, like uh, we want to see the uh, results directly in GitHub. And I have shown you an example how this could look. This is from another tool. It's called Codacy. Codacy is uh, reviewing a pull request with check style and find bugs in a server application. And after the review is ready, they report the results back to GitHub. So you directly see that here, yeah, I've, I've used the number five, which is not good and it should be replaced. So the idea is that we have in Jenkins uh, the possibility to provide an API for plugins so that uh, if uh, Jenkins reports a test failure or a warning or something else, one can call this API and then it will automatically generate a link in GitHub. Yeah, that's the idea behind it. And maybe you can switch to the next slide, Oleg, please. Yeah, sure. And we have a project uh, a documentation uh, on the web and I just uh, put the milestones here on this slide. So the idea is, so one step is you need to know what is the GitHub API, a uh, GitHub checks API, what is, what do you, what can you do with it? What kind of API possibilities do you have? Then an idea would be to provide that API in a general way in Jenkins. And then it would be good to have one example so we can, for instance, create warnings from Jenkins in GitHub. So this is so the basic idea of our GitHub checks integration within Jenkins. There are more details uh, on the web page. I think it makes sense that you read this small project proposal and maybe we can uh, chat afterwards uh, about some details about this project. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we have a meeting on Friday. Uh, yes, of course. You're yeah. Right. So if you're interested, um, we organize uh, some meetings specifically to discuss projects. You can find them in Jenkins event calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and here, for example, uh, it's in my zone. Here you can discover that uh, there are some meetings planned. So, mm -hmm. for example, we have a fingerprint storage discussion tomorrow, and we have a checks API discussion on Friday. And I guess uh, we will have a discussion for Pipeline as YAML project, which uh, we are yet to discuss uh, at Pipeline Authoring C. So, feel free to join us, and we are happy to organize additional sessions if you need clarification about the uh, project ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. That's from me everything. I think. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Oh, Marky, sorry, I missed you in the list. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. Yeah. I'd like uh, Rick to be able to go ahead and go first. Okay. I don't have a slide prepared. Uh, I was just going to give a brief overview, but I'd like Rick to okay. be able to go first. Okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't have a slide also. Mm -hmm. I can share my screen. Okay, if you want to do so, so just do it. So I believe you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. As we know, uh, if uh, if a user just downloaded Jenkins, uh, the 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 Jenkins cannot do uh, can't do anything uh, if they don't uh, install any plugins. So uh, people usually will install uh, a lot of plugins that configure configure them. Um, uh, if for a new user, it's uh, it, it might be a little bit uh, difficult for a user uh, who 
very familiar with Jacobs, it's very boring. So this proposal will improve this experience. Uh, like uh, if we have a, a website or for the like a custom dot tickets dot l, then uh, people can just choose the tickets cover there and choose the plugins. Uh, maybe we can also uh, provide the configuration like user password or update central or other things. Um, second, uh, people use tickets for some specific areas, like uh, uh, some users just uh, use tickets in the Kubernetes, Kubernetes or uh, other user cases. So I believe we can build up some uh, uh, different, uh, I, I mean, user cases. So we can have uh, 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 like uh, I, I called it a uh, formula. I have another project to do some research like I call it a formula. Uh, this formula is a out of the box, like a one formula. It contains conf configuration as code and uh, some uh, Chinese localization. Uh, so this project can uh, build the Docker image automatically. Uh, then another formula might be a configure that code uh, plus pipeline plus Kubernetes. Then people can use this Docker image. They don't need to install all these plugins and uh, uh, some, uh, they also can get an initial configuration of the chickens. So I believe people can benefit from this maybe a lot. Uh, so uh, this project is practice to have a back and front project. Uh, thanks to the custom war a package of chickens, this project did a lot of work for us. So I believe this is my thought about this proposal. You can get some information from the other projects like a Spring Boat documentation and uh, uh, some you believe from uh, friendly issues and also you can check out my project uh, project to get some ideas i think is that's all i want to uh, uh explanation thank you thank you Joe, for the presentation Okay, and uh, the next project ID we have in the list is uh, one uh, by Marky about machine learning. So we may go over time, uh, maybe five to 10 minutes, uh, but yeah, I think that we have enough time. Uh, okay, cool. Well, thank you everybody. Uh, I am one of the potential mentors for the machine learning project. Uh, there is also another uh, mentor on the call, Jonas, and essentially what we're going to, what we're proposing is everybody is aware that, you know, there is the Jupyter Notebooks and they basically are Python and they're interactive uh, computational notebooks like Jupyter and Zeppelin. And what we are proposing is to build a Jenkins plugin that allows the integration of existing uh, Polygot notebook kernels to support notebooks like uh, compu uh, computations such as Jenkins. So essentially building a data pipeline or a machine learning pipeline and using this plugin to allow to extend to these notebooks. It, uh, it really will basically unlock a lot of the backend type of kernel computational stuff that is being utilized. That is it in a nutshell. There's a lot more to go into. We do have a Gitter channel, 
and we do a lot of talking in there. We are doing the current student proposals right now. This project requires you have a knowledge of Python because you'll be extending the Jupyter Notebooks via Python in, in a plugin. I know that was a little bit, I was a little unprepared to do this, so I apologize for seeming like I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, is there anybody that has any questions? I would think there is, but maybe not. Maybe not. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in Zoom chat or in uh, our Gitter chat or for this purpose, maybe GSOC machine learning project. Um, I do think we one. have a question in chat. Uh, Rahim, do you have a question? If you do, you are on mute. Yeah, you can see chat right now. Rahim, I'm going to unmute you. Actually, I can. I don't see you have a microphone connected. If you'd like, Rahim, you could reach out to us in the uh, machine learning channel, and I'll be happy. If you don't feel comfortable asking in there, please do feel free to reach out to me directly or one of the other potential mentors, which is Bruno, Jonas. We're happy to help in any way. Uh, let's see. I'm oh, The question is, I'm fluent in R and not in Python. Am I welcome? Yes, you are. And in GSOC is an opportunity to study. So you don't have to be an expert in technology if they list it here. It's a skills to study and improve. So some basic yeah. knowledge is of course uh, required uh, to get you started, uh, but you can get a uh, deeper knowledge during GSOC and it's one of the main purposes of it learning. We will be hosting an office hours for the machine learning project in the coming days. Uh, look forward, uh, look for Look for that, mm -hmm. sorry. Look for that in, uh, I'll actually m make a note in mm -hmm. our Gitter channel and then we will tweet it out. I will like to add one other thing. This coming Saturday, I will be, uh, I will be part of a panel that will be discussing how to write student proposals. I will put a link to that notification in the, in, uh, the Zoom chat if you have it, if you'd like to join that. That's Thank all you, for Marke. me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so we could spend uh, maybe a few extra minutes. So next in our agenda is uh, Jenkins Python is YAML. So. Uh, hey all. Uh, thank you for the time. So I would like to say a few things about this project, Jenkins Python is YAML. So for the ones who are not so familiar with the Jenkins pipelines, uh, it is a special domain specific language where we can store our pipelines in our favorite version control systems and Jenkins has the ability to run the pipelines from these uh, files specifically written in a specific domain specific language. So the idea of the project is to create a plugin uh, well, we can define our Jenkins pipelines as YAML definitions. So as YAML is very popular right now and also well known. So the idea is the plugin to be able to provide a solution for defining our pipelines as YAML. So this is the very overview. If you guys have any questions or things you can always ask. Uh, thank you for the time. Yeah. Thank you for the quick introduction and just uh, for some information. Uh, yeah, Jenkins is a part of uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation. We also uh, work with Jenkins X and with other projects. So one thing you could consider is, for example, uh, doing syntax which would be close to Jenkins X pipeline or, for example, doing uh, uh, support of other syntaxes like Tecton as one of potential opportunities or maybe just creating a fully original format, depending on uh, what is your view for that. And you're welcome to make all kinds of such proposals. We will uh, review them and uh, we will be happy to provide feedback. And uh, I guess Ayutun has recent uh, project started, which is Pipeline is YAML. So you can also check it out uh, for some insights and examples how it could be implemented. 
So if you consider this project, uh, please be sure to study a bit and try it out. Okay, thank you. So I guess that's all uh, from our list. Uh, just in case, are there any mentors uh, who want to, to say a few words about their projects? Or should we close down or? Okay, so question to students. Are there any questions? I have one question. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm currently working on the Chex API project and uh, mm -hmm. I've wrote a demo for it and just I just found some flaws in my design and I have listed them on my proposal. I just want to know whether it is okay to uh, include those uh, um, flaws in my proposal and submit my or, or should I just delete those uh, that delete the, the, the same I submitting my proposal? I would say to leave them in. Remain them? I would leave them in, personally. Okay. Well, I, uh, I've appreciated personally discovering mistakes when, when a, a Google Summer of Code exploring student has disclosed, oh, well, look, here's this problem I found in the Git client plugin or the Git plugin. It's very valuable, so much appreciated and, and commendable. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, again, uh, our main objective is to find a project idea, some project proposals which have the highest chance of success. And if you do any research, uh, a negative result is a result. And uh, please put it uh, in your proposal so we can see that you did some exploration in this area. And it can be a basis for us when we do project planning during uh, uh, community bonding and uh, next phases. And it's really important for us. Thank you. Okay, anything else for today? I guess not. So again, if you have any questions, uh, Gitter channel uh, is quite active. And uh, the same goes to mailing list. So just use any of these channels, whatever you prefer to ask uh, uh, questions. Uh, maybe we have something in the list, uh, not yet. Uh, but yeah, just ask and have a great Google Summer of Code. Again, thanks a lot for your interest. Uh, we know that uh, Google Summer of Code is a, a big commitment by students. And if you participate in the Jenkins project, we hope to make it a great experience for everyone. So. Looking forward uh, to get your proposals and to work with you during the next phases. So I'll stop the recording then. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, good luck. We will okay. publish uh, this uh, video within uh, several hours. Thank you all. Okay, thank bye. you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.